Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. Today we are coming at you with something with something a little bit different. Basically, I am doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with a player here, and we're gonna be going through things step by step. She normally plays on King or no Prince difficulty, and we have her in DD difficulty, so we basically took her and threw her into the deep end here. But uh, we're gonna be going through step by step, and I'm gonna give it, be giving her some tips to how to play uh, culture games and seeing what we can do with that. So if that sounds like something you'd want to watch, then definitely stick around. If you want to get good at Civ 6, then subscribe and click the bell to keep up with this channel. All right, yeah, anyways, talk freely as much as you want. Like it's all, don't worry, just pretend like the camera's not here, basically. Okay, I'm still trying to figure my shit out. Okay, no problem. So I'll start putting my own stuff then, and then and then we'll look to, through yours afterwards. Trust me, it's gonna be legendary. Oh, I gotta shut those off. Uh, Can't his holy site like only be built on hills or something like that? No, nothing like that. It can be built anywhere. It's it's the exact same thing as an, a normal holy site. Uh, it's just they have a unique tile improvement, the rock hewn church that gets a lot of faith, and that that has to be built on hills. But it's a tile improvement. It's it's not a. Um, not a building or a district or anything. So the only thing that you want to be worried about for your settle is you want to obviously settle on fresh water. So you know about like using your settler lens, I'm assuming? Yes. Like, you know, you can hit number four to turn it on and off so you don't have to like go over to the lenses because I would find that it's super annoying if I had to come manually do it instead of just clicking four. Yeah, I have it set. Is that too? I think, or sometimes I'll just click it anyway. Yeah, it's by it's by default that it's four. Like I didn't I didn't change anything. It's not my magic thing. Um, but yeah, so when you're pinning your thing, pin it so that I I can see it too. Because then we'll, like we'll go over over what okay. you would do, and then if I would change anything differently. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna set mine up here. Oh, so the only thing, other thing that he has with settling is you want you want to make sure that you settle your city on a hill with him. That's the only only other thing, because if you don't settle your city on a hill, then um, then you don't get the fifteen percent culture and science for all the faith you generate. So you don't have to. Right. Yeah. But it's highly recommended. <laughs> like do like do everything you can to settle on a hill, sort of thing. Okay, you guys. Okay. I gotta go put one of my dogs in the bedroom, but you keep doing you, I'll be back. <laughs> there we go. Like, I swear to God, it is worse than having parents sometimes. Oh no, it's okay. But I'm on worse than having talk, children. You're missing yelling at my, my lizard to stop, like, hitting his face on the glass. <laughs> but then I assume that it, because of where you live, that, like, when you were completely surprised that I didn't, what was the name of it again? Something Butterfly? <laughs> what? A bearded dragon. Oh, a bearded dragon. Okay, yeah, that 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 you were like completely blown away that I, that wasn't common knowledge where I'm from. Yeah, we don't we don't have many bearded dragons in in Canada and Northern Ontario. That's that's why I was just like, what? Like, <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, I thought they were a super common pet, <laughs> and they very well could be. I I shouldn't actually I shouldn't speak for all Canadians <laughs> considering how special I can be at times. But uh, definitely the first time I, I heard of, of the name. But uh, then again, like I said, that's not necessarily saying a whole lot. It could be a desert thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still like fervently trying to get out of his cage. Dang it, dude. Okay. Uh, so at the holy site, I don't plan those things out in advance usually because um, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, but... no worries. Need a couple options. Okay, no, um, no. Number so, two was the only option because the AI told me to. And never. Li okay, first off, delete, delete that. Never listen to the AI. That that it, it is. Yeah, just never pretend like those little city things don't ever exist because they're wrong. Like the the AI. I don't know what they were smoking when they came up with whatever like criterion they consider a good city tile because it's also telling you that the one to the directly to the east is a good tile which is another dumpster fire location it's not on fresh water like just take my word for it like look at some of the cities that the ai settles in the game when you're playing against them when they like settle with no fresh water and no nothing just just trust me so yeah city option number two is not a good choice because like i said with ethiopia you want to make sure you're settling on a hill for sure um but 
Uh, so your city center three is also not a good option because of the fresh water. So basically, you have, in my opinion anyways, you have the best option is where you have it. City center option number one is to settle in place because um, you're on fresh water. But then if you don't know, if you settle on a plains hill, which is that's the tile that you're on right now, your city center starts with a two food and two production base. Whereas if you say you settle, say you were to move over to the right and settle on that tile, it's a grassland hill tile. Even though it's a 2 2 tile right now, it's only a 2 2 tile when the forest is there. When you settle your city, it'll actually be two food and one production. So it's only Plains Hills that give you that two food and two production start. So when, if you can settle on them, that's always a good option. But so for me, in your se section here, it would literally only be one of two spots. It would be right here. It would be where you have it pinned or where I just pinned it because of the fresh water. Um, so what I would do in order to make a more informed decision is take your warrior and move it over onto the hill where uh, I pinned that city center thing so that you can see more. Yeah, so then that, see, and there you go. Now you have a mountain. So because of this, I would actually take the city center of what I pinned only because your holy sites get adjacencies for mountains. So the like you have a better chance, like it's gonna be a turn three settle rather than a turn one settle. So you'll be two turns back but it's not that far behind. And you do have nicer tiles to work where you are right now, actually. However, it's kind of rolling the dice. So the the thing for like settling in place are you get to start right away. You have nice two, two tiles to work. And when I say two, two tiles, you know what I'm talking about or no? Just checking before. Yeah, the, I have okay. the production things on. Yeah, no worries. I just, cause I just take so many things for granted, right? I just want to make sure. But yeah, so uh, you have that nice ring of two, two tiles to work immediately, right? Uh, and then like basically four of them pretty close by. However, you don't know if you have any mountains cause there very well could be mountains on the other side of that range, which would make this the dream location, right? But then there also could not be any. So you could get stuck with a very bad holy site unless you get that sacred path pantheon we were talking about however as long as you build your holy site fairly close to you if you build your um your government plaza next to the holy site then it, it can still be a plus three like what you really you just want all your holy sites to be a plus three so essentially either settle in place and risk it that you're gonna have to have a lower adjacency holy site if there's no mountains in the fog of war that you can't see or decide to settle on turn three where your warrior is now where you do know there's at least one mountain to work with but possibly more that you haven't seen yet it'll just be a little bit of a layer to start but then as far as like which is better you will have better tiles to work immediately in the first city however you also do have other two two tiles that are are in your second ring so it's not going to take you many turns to earn 50 gold or, or less because we're on online speed, right? Yeah, so I don't even know how much it's going to cost you, but it's not going to take you many turns to get the money that you need to buy at one of those two, two tiles to start working them either way. So either or is a viable option. They both kind of have their own risks and rewards, but I'll leave it to you decide which you want to go for because really I, I don't think either one of them is a bad, bad thing to do. And then just let me know when you decide what you want to do i'm going to be turned to settling on mine if you want to pop over and look at my location quickly just why i pinned things the way i did so again i'm in a plain a plains hill where i am right now but i'm actually going to move over to this tile and that's because my holy site here i don't think you can see my cursor but just take my word so my holy site is there it's going to start it have the the two adjacency from the mountains right the two tiles there and then it's going to get get half an adjacency from being next to my city center like not right away it'll be a plus two to begin with but then as soon as i build a district on either where the weed is where the stone is or on that other tile beside it it'll automatically turn into a plus three and then there is still a chance that like see how like there's that one tile that looks to be in in the middle of all three mountains but like you can't see it because it's in the fog of war if not don't worry it, like if you don't know what i'm talking about don't worry can you not hear me Oh, no, I can hear you now. I, I didn't hear what if you said something when, when I asked you that, though. Oh, I might have gone too fast. I was saying yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, so that there's that, that one tile in the middle. That might be a plus three holy site if there's nothing there. I just don't know for a fact yet, right? So the where I have my holy site pinned 
would be the best with what I like the information I have access to right now. But there could be a better potential from that I could still reach with this city, depending on what's around those corners. So that's where I'm going to go with my warrior is I'm going to poke around the corner and go look to see what's there so that I can make the better decision by the time I place my holy site. But anywho, I'm all done my turn. Uh, and you need to make your choice whether you want to settle or whether you want to shuffle over and settle on that other one. Again, either one is is just fine. You're risking it. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I saw. <laughs> I never get the pantheon I want in my experience, so. Yeah, it's, and, and that's why I, I think that you made the correct decision. Like, you could make arguments either or, but in my opinion, it's better to go with this holy site that's going to give you more more adjacency naturally it just makes your life a lot easier and if you can increase the chances of that happening all the better right but yeah it still says it's waiting for you though have you not ended your turn if you're enjoying the video do me a favor and smash the like button it really helps small channels like mine grow and get discovered better yet leave a comment while you're at it interacting with my community is hands down my favorite part of this whole youtube experience and i do my best to respond to each and every one and by this time at least i hope it should go without saying that i'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have so leave them in the comments down below or jump over to our community discord server and get a hold of me there <laughs> don't worry I, like i said i'm not th this whole multiplayer thing is new to me too um i don't know if i should be like moving my how i would normally <laughs> or if i should well, what do you what do you mean okay so how how would you move normally then that's the perfect question that's what this is all about right so where where would you go normally with with your builder just don't move it yet but just help tell me I would probably pick whether I wanted to go north or south, just to start exploring what would be around my said city. Yeah, so exactly. I that, I would either go to the, the jungle tile, that's the two two to the to the northeast of that mountain, or I would move to the stone that's to the so southeast of it. Like th that's where I would go first, so that you could have a better idea of where you want to settle your, or sorry, where you want to drop your holy site when, like, you actually get to make it right. Oh, there's a goodie hut. Damn it, I chose wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta circle around and go back. That's the one nice thing about the settlers having that extra view, right? Is that you, you get to see that at least. Um, and so remember too, we are on Secret Society's game mode too, which does play a part in it. Um, so you might get your Void Singer's introduction if that's the route you wanna go. All right, so I am going to be opening up a scout first and the reason why i'm opening up a scout first is because we are on secret society's game mode so it's a lot more important than ever that you get your scouts out early because the more the quicker you get your scouts out the quicker you have chances at getting yourself golden ages in the classical era which is also a really convenient thing to get if you're if you're playing a culture game and you're going for religion because you're gonna have that faith income. Like we're playing as Ethiopia, so we're gonna have really high faith income. But just in general, excuse me, just in general, it's a good philosophy, even if you're not playing with somebody as stacked as Ethiopia is. But then, uh, cause those scouts, they, you gotta think you have the, the better chance of meeting people. You have the better chance of getting first meets on city states, which gives you envoys. So not only does it give you a little boost of like culture or faith or gold or whatever right it also gives you a chance of earning that extra governor title from the owls of minerva and then the same thing with the goody huts right every goody hut you land on is error score but it's also a chance for you to get your invitation to the, the void singers as far as what we are going for uh, technology or what i'm opening up with it's basically map dependent when you're opening up for a religion you want to get astrology fairly quickly however if you don't actually have somewhere to put a holy site that you can't like that you can't put it down like say for instance if you were to put your holy site down on that stone you can't put it there until you get mining right and then even then if you do that you're wasting the tile technically because if you were to go for masonry next you could actually harvest that stone and turn the production into your holy site which would make you get it faster even though theoretically you have to like get that extra tech it would still be worthwhile um, but yeah for me on my holy site specifically 
Uh, it looks like the one that I have right beside me that I originally pinned is going to be my best one. So before I go to astrology, it doesn't make any sense to get astrology for the holy site that I can't put down until I get mining in order to chop the trees, right? Yeah? Just because I didn't hear yes. what... Yeah? Okay. Sorry. Were you talking to the lizard again? Was that... Were you away from the mic? Ooh, now I'm gonna... No, sorry. I'm just to talk, and I don't think it works very well sometimes. Oh, okay. No worries. I, I'm just... I'm spoiled because mine's always on, so I don't have to push to talk at all. And you're just stuck <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> no, yeah. it's keep you from having to edit out, like, a toddler yelling or something. Oh, in don't... The background all the time. Oh, no, don't worry at all. I could give a shit. Like, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. It's not like... It's just a high production thing that we're doing here. It's just... It's hopefully to help new players and... The people who can sit through it and, and take from it what they will great and otherwise go fuck themselves so yeah like i i know you have children and everything don't work, do that on my account like just keep your mic on it's i haven't heard a single like peep from your end other than like you talking so i think we're okay unless you really want to then leave it do what you want but <laughs> i'm just saying don't feel the need to on on my account or for the video all right so if you quickly take <laughs> Real quick. If you take a look back at my location, like at my city here, so I'm actually going to move my locations and I'm going to do my holy site here. So, which means that I also need to get masonry before I can make that happen, but I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. Because if I do that, I get an automatic plus three. Actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, no, I changed my mind. That'll be my campus later. Uh, so I am going to go with my original plan of my holy site, oops, my holy site right beside me. And then I'm going to be looking to get, because culture is very important, obviously, in culture games, right? Uh, and so you kind of want to plan for that ahead of time. So what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to plan to go for the oracle. And then I'm going to plan to put my theater square right here. And so that way, as soon as my theater square gets down, this becomes a plus three because the holy site gets the one adjacency from each of those mountains, right? And then when it's next to when it has two districts next to each other and your city counts as a district, it goes gets an extra plus one, right? So that'll be a plus three. And then same thing with the theater square itself, the holy site and a city count as a district, so that's plus one. And then the um once the oracle is finished, if it's finished, that would turn it into a plus three. If that makes sense. Yeah. Also, I've been like munching on ships, so I really hope you don't hear that. But if you do tell me, I will move my mic. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You can always mute yourself, but don't worry. Like it, it's. That's true too. <laughs> it's not not the end of the world, but but yeah. Um, if if, if it, I do hear you, I will let you know because believe it or not, that's actually one of my biggest pet peeves is people chewing and like I, I literally <laughs> yeah I like I literally avoid like dinners with my mom sometimes because like she chews loud and like she clicks when she chews and I just it ugh, right. it drives me up the world like I love my mom to death but there's just certain things that I can't deal with <laughs> yeah no under understandable. Oh, I'm going to test something. Okay, cool. My it, lighting mute works. Yeah, it, it works. I heard it click in and click out, so you're all good. Well, okay. Oh, wait, they're waiting on me. Okay, so for your city, this is the first question. Where do you think, what tile are you going to work first? Probably the one that gives me the fastest uh, growth. Perfect answer. Look at you. Way to go. Yeah, that is, it was a loaded question that you definitely want to work that. So say even if you were to settle back at the old location where you had those two, two tiles to work, you still want to work the three tile or the three food tile. You want to force it. So you like you, you click on it and it locks your uh, citizen in place and then put mm -hmm. it onto production focused after that. And then you want to keep it focused on that until it reaches three population. And then at three population, unlock the food tile so you don't work it and just stay on production focused after that. Uh, just trust me, like I, I've done a bunch of testing on it and I have a video that is like 
the gameplay is done, but I haven't written a script or anything like that, so it's probably going to be another week or two at least before it comes out. But I played like 10 different games on like the same map, well, five on one map and five on a different map to, to like test it. And it's just, just trust me, unless you have tiles that are like way stronger, like a, you know, like a two food, two production and three gold or something like just, unless there's something like outrageously more powerful than a two, two, it's always better to work the three, the three food tile to, to grow faster. Right. Okay, so now I guess the decision would be if I make my warrior go all the way back through the hut or if I just keep going. I, I would go around because um, I would get because you're going to start building a scout, right? Yeah, that's so, what I usually So do. I would get the goodie hut with your scout because it'll actually help level your scout up. Like, because your scout gets experience when it like meets other civilizations, when it meets goodie huts or when it finds natural wonders. So it'll actually help you get your scout promoted faster if, and because it's so close to your capital, like 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be okay letting your scout go to get that and it's not going to like grab it by somebody else because chances are there's not going to be anybody that's that close to, to your spawn. Right. I mean, there there is always the chance that sure, maybe, but like not likely, right? Right. So now, not like you have... But yeah, so remember, keep in mind that you are on DD difficulty. So you you want to poke around with your warrior a little bit, but you actually want to keep them fairly close to home because a barbarian camp is going to spawn near you like pretty quickly and you want to have your warrior somewhat close. So I kind of like just poke around. Don't go too, too far. But like you still do want to get out there and explore, right? So right. just don't go on like the long lost or homeward bound or whatever, like the long journey or whatever just poke a, poke around but be ready to run back like if you take a look and see at my screen how far my warrior is right now i'm now going to circle back around and come back around the mountaintop to come back home because he's like that's pretty far out there as far as i'm concerned because like the um, barbarians are pretty crazy all right so i am going to be opening up with a second scout or actually wait i changed my mind i'm going to be opening up with a monument um you don't yeah, never build those. okay and they're very very impo the important to build you don't have to build them so early but think about it right now like if you look at your culture output right i can no i appreciate the muting because you're chewing i understand don't worry <laughs> um if you look at your you to explain so it's like oh good timing and then you're like Oh, wait. Yeah, I, f I figured it out. Okay, but if you look at your culture output, mine's at 1.2 per turn, so I'm assuming yours is somewhat similar to that. Uh, yeah. So a monument generates you two culture a turn, so I'm literally going to be like basically tripling my culture output as soon as I build that. And so I don't always get them this early, but the other thing too that you have to consider is that um, your your borders, like your city borders, expand based on the culture level inside of the city. So the quicker that you get your culture input, or sorry, get your culture output increased, the quicker your tiles will naturally expand, which actually saves you money because then you don't have to buy tiles. And then on top of that, with you in particular, you'll be able to work those two, two tiles faster, right? And there's also that two, three deer tile over to the, the west of you beside the mountain. Uh, yeah. But again, you don't have to, it's not a necessity. Like I would probably, if I was you, I would open up two scouts personally like i would go scout scout but that's just just my personal thing like i'm comfortable like being naked essentially as far as like defending myself from the computer goes like i i i like to push the envelope so don't do as i say not as i do i would i would leave the monument until until later like not too too later but like yeah yeah makes sense Ooh, actually wait a second oh I'm an idiot okay so another tip for you too um, go press equal on your keyboard like beside the backspace the equal key okay and it switches it into strategic mode for you like yeah. see it, it looks like an old game it's so much easier to plan your districts like this because like it, it scroll over to my city real quick okay and look how, like, I literally almost made a, 
colossal mistake. So the plus three holy site where I have it planned, right? It's going to take a bunch of work to get there. But I have this location right here that's going to be a plus three automatically from the mountains. And like I just almost missed it entirely because like if you look back at the normal view, the mountains look a little bit weird there and I didn't like see that. Oh, that's three of them. But you can easily see it when you switch into strategic mode. So I just I find it so much easier when you're planning stuff. Uh, but yeah, so that totally changes my whole plan. Yeah. <sighs> Not by like crazy amounts, but enough that it counts. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so I, when you're first getting used to planning your cities, I would always suggest going into strategic mode. And then, if you don't like it, don't use it. But I, as a like foundation building skill, that's what I would highly recommend doing. Uh, and ooh, they're only twenty five bucks to buy a tile. So I went ahead and grabbed that now. And now I have mining. But I need to get a builder, so after my monument, I'm going to go into a builder next. Because I I want to chop that forest into my holy site. I don't want to... Oops. I don't want to just override the forest. I want to, like, put that production into my holy site. Um, but anyways, tech-wise, I finished mining. So, taking a look around, I'm going to need to go to masonry eventually to get rid of the stone that is around. Um, but other than that... There's not really any huge rush immediately. So in culture games, basically it's all about culture. <laughs> like in the early game, I know that sounds stupid, but like it's in the, the middle game, it's a mix of culture and science that's important. But in the early game, you just want to be worrying about find, finding cities that have good holy site locations and then um, getting your culture game going as quickly as you can because it's really important like if you look in the civic tree it's really important that we get down obviously get to drama and poetry to unlock theater squares themselves but more importantly it's more important to get to theology where we can unlock the mahabodhi temple which is a, a wonder it's very good to get um but more important than that even is the scripture policy card it's basically like if you are used to playing science games you said where you uh, you use like natural philosophy where you get plus 100 percent yeah. campus districts it's the same thing except for your holy sites so uh the quicker you get there the better off you're going to be and then ideally we are going to reform church even further down that path so we're, we're basically going to be like hugging the bottom half of the civics tree in in um in culture games but then as far as the tech tree itself goes like after your basic initial astrology which that's what i'm going for next year but after astrology essentially there's very few things that you need to prioritize in culture games and i would say personally that getting to machinery it's on the bottom half of your your tech tree is very important so that you can unlock the Kilwaka Sewanee wonder because that's the best wonder in the game um the what wonder Kilwaka Sewanee it's in machinery like the one that gives you crossbows it's on the bottom half of the tech tree okay it's like just just read that and let me know if you can see why it's so powerful or and then I can kind of explain the specifics of it if if it's not apparent I don't mean to no, put yeah, that, that makes sense yeah like it's crazy so like literally and and that works for every single one too right so if you have two suzerains of of culture city states two suzerains of science city states two of faith or, or anything you could literally have plus 15 percent culture science faith production at like and gold like it's it's stupid powerful and because you get it so wow. early in the game like it, and it's available in the medieval era at the very beginning. It's just by far the most powerful wonder in the game, in my opinion. But you also have to be careful to plan out for it accordingly, because it has to be, it has to be placed on um, a coastal city, or sorry, a coastal tile rather, that is flat. So you should basically, if you don't have like any spot in your first like two or three cities that has like a flat coastal tile. You should always be looking to settle a city specifically for that wonder. Like, it's it's literally worth building a city just for that wonder if you can get it. Like, that's how powerful it is. It's just ridiculously strong. 
Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever built that before. Yeah, yeah. see, we're already making progress. All right, so uh, I have mine pinned, so it's going to be a race. By the way, <laughs> oh, I don't have a. I don't. I'm not on a coastal. So, well, you have those lakes there. Are those coast? They count as coastal? I believe. Guys? I believe for the wonder they do. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. You might need to get a city that has like. Uh, the little, the like the waves on it, like that one, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't think so. I think, I think it can be lakes too, but I'm not, not positive on that. So we'll find out later once I get to machinery, but yeah. So for tech wise, like now I went to mining because I needed to chop that forest. And then I'm basically going straight into astrology. Cause now that's all I need to get my holy site up. And then I'm literally just going to click on machinery. Like I'm going to hold shift. So that way. I have astrology is my next thing. And then after that, I'm literally going to get all the text straight to machinery. And so then what you want to do is you kind of want to take a look at that for yourself. And so you have like a better idea of what things you're going to be wanting to do, like to earn Eurekas, you know, because every Eureka that you get, it, it doesn't seem like a lot necessarily in the early game, like especially when you're in the ancient era and the classical era, but every single Eureka you get is 40% of the science required for that technology. So it really is significant and you want to try to get every single Eureka that you can that isn't too much of an investment of time because there's certain ones that I, I always hard tech, like that's the gamer term for like just research the whole way and not, not get it boosted. But um, generally speaking, I try to get almost every single one that that's possible. But yeah, and so like actually, if I if I look at my screen and the way the computer set it up for me when I did that after astrology, it has me getting the wheel first. But it's so stupid because getting bronze working unlocks iron for you, which allows you to see iron on the map. Which then, if you make an iron mine, you can get. Uh, the boost for the wheel and iron working at the same time like one one mine would do it for you so i would suggest getting bronze working before the wheel if you want to go that route but like i said i'm definitely picking up astrology next and then for you so you have some pins going down here i can see so you want to <laughs> walk me through I, said, I, I like the question marks at the end <laughs> i don't I don't plan full admit admittance. I don't plan any of my districts because I don't, I'm not good at like knowing what pluses do what. So I usually okay. wait until I have them and then it tells me. Yeah, bad. that is horribly but. bad. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> horribly bad. So what, what you want to do then until you have it memorized, because it like, it takes a bit of practice for one, two, I have, uh, I have a video out. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Jesus, sorry about that. Um, so I have a video I'll send you to. Well, you don't have to watch it, but I'll, I'll send you the link anyways in Discord after we're done. Where it's like a tutorial I did for how to plan your cities. Like just basic beginner shit, not like, not advanced, like crazy stuff like I do in some of my games, but just the very core fundamentals. But that's for, for like seriously, like that is the biggest thing that you could work on right now to literally jump up a difficulty level. If you're planning your cities properly, it's going to give you the foundation you need to like make the rest of the game that much easier. And if you're not planning them properly with foresight before you go ahead and, and build your stuff, you're you're like really for lack of a better term kicking yourself in the nuts. Like I know figuratively, <laughs> I guess it would have to be, but um so do you want to run me through like where you pin those things and, and why you were wondering and like what you're wondering about? Um, I yeah, I'm trying to think. Of the <laughs> no worries, so I don't mean like, to put the pressure on you. No, it's okay. It's just like I have the thoughts in my brain, but speaking them is different. Getting them out of their mouth is another thing. I oh, I know you're preaching to the choir. It takes a while to get get used to being able to freaking get it out like on demand. So I was thinking like the holy site because of the mountain and then because of the square. Because of the what? Sorry? Because of the, the theater square? square? Okay. So that and then... Yeah. Okay, no, that makes sense so far. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm following. That's as far as I went. And That's then as I far as you go. Okay, fair enough. Pretty much, I'm pretty much near the government plaza gives adjacency bonuses to... Correct. To the theater square if it's next to two. It, it gives it to every single district except for an encampment. So, or an, or, or uh, entertainment complex. 
but that, um, that was my logic there. <laughs> okay, so so that it, the holy site is correct. The theater square that could work just fine, um, but the government plaza is actually in a very bad spot because essentially you're throwing away an entire um, adjacency because your city doesn't get any bonus from it at all, right? So what with the locations that you have set up right now, I would actually move it to to the south between the holy site and the theater square. Um, oh. And then each of those would get plus ones, right? And then as you, what I would do then is with your first scout, which you're going down to get your goodie hut anyway, you're obviously going to see, like, look in that area more and look for some fresh water so that you can build another city to, to your southwest a little bit. And that way you can plan districts between your capital and the second city so that hopefully you can completely surround your government plaza with other districts. Or like as many as you can anyway. But that no, one like work between cities. Yeah, it, it's it's just any any district whatsoever. So you might have to shift um, ownership of the tiles. Like do you know how to swap tiles between cities that are close to each other? Yeah. Yeah, that's all you'd have to do. Like if you want to build if you want to build the district in a, in a different city or whatever, that that would be that. Like you just like swap the tile and, and then plant it, and it, it does work for for both cities. Okay, that's cool. But yeah, so so far so good. And as an added bonus too, you'll get an extra faith because I know you said you weren't completely familiar with the adjacency bonuses. Your holy site there, if you if you do get it there, will get uh, it'll get one adjacency from the mountain, but then. For every two forests that is beside your holy site, um, it would get it. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to change your plan. Oh. Hey, delete the government plaza for a second. I know I just told you to put it there, but I'll, I'll explain my the method to my madness here in a second. All right. So I would suggest that you go for this wonder. It's called the Mahabadi Temple. I'll leave it for you. I won't go. I won't get it because normally I would go get it myself personally. Oh, hold on. I pinned it to myself. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Mohabadi Temple, it gives you two free apostles. So it's the best wonder that you could get in a religious-only game if you're going to go a religious game. Like, we're doing culture, so don't worry, right? But what those two apostles give you, though, is you can instantly improve your, your religion with them, right? So, like, you finish up, so that gives you a bunch of error score for, for finishing the beliefs to your religion, and then plus, because you get it so early compared to, to everybody else, there's a good chance that you can have your pick of the litter as far as the second improvements go. And then by putting that there where I have it pinned, you can see it, right? I, I didn't put that to team. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see uh, it. By putting it there, it also gives your theater square plus two culture adjacency because any wonders that you build next to theater squares do do that like they give plus two so your theater square will become a plus three because you'll have your your holy site your city which is one and then the mohobody temple which is two and the reason why we're putting it there is because it has to be built on a forest next to a holy site so that that's why it has to go there like and so remember not to chop that tile because <laughs> you need that tile for for the wonder otherwise it doesn't work yeah, there, there's another confession. I rarely chop tiles because I am impatient. <laughs> oh, really? See, that's so funny yeah. that, that um, like, you being impatient is... I would think you'd be the opposite. I'd think you'd be crazy chopping because, like, chopping makes you build stuff faster. Yeah, no, I'm just like, oh, I can build this here. Oh, shit, oh. there's a thing on it. Oh, well, I'll just get rid of it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just slow it slow it down a bit. I don't know, smoke a joint or something before you play <laughs> next time. Take take it down a notch. No, uh, yeah, it's th that. those are two really, really big things, like district planning, but then also chopping, because a lot of new players don't understand the importance of how, like, how, or how significant chopping actually speeds up your game. Yeah. Um, and they think that, oh, like they worry about, oh, you know, I, I, I'm chopping it out, but then I'm going to lose that production. Well, not really, because as soon as you get down to like, say for chopping any of these forests that you see, right? You chop mm -hmm. them, you get the production from them. That helps you build your districts and your buildings and all that shit faster. But then also, as soon as you get into the late game and you get down to con uh, conservation in the theater or in the theater square, in the civic tree, uh, 
you can plant forests and then build lumber mills on those forests if you want to. So like, it, it literally is just a, there's no other way to, to describe it other than a mistake to not be chopping. Sorry, I have an upset little man who's mad I took the big TV away. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Like, don't worry. I, like I said, my daughter is like 12 now, but I, I remember those days aren't that far behind me. <laughs> okay. So, oh shit, what's with I wasn't doing anything. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I was just waiting at, like, to hit next turn. It's no big deal. So, did you get your invite? I did not. I got a scout promotion instead. Ah, you got a free scout, or did you just build your scout? No, that was I built my second. Oh, scout. okay. Okay. So for your promotion for the scout, uh, it's totally up to you. Both of them are legitimate choices, especially on this map that we have right now. I normally go for uh, if if there's not so much forestation around, I normally go for the alpine promotion first because it does make it easier, but because there is so much forestation, really, I would just go one or the other. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'm probably going to do the rainforest one just because there's so much. Yeah, and then, so you're going to get your Code of Laws next turn, right? Because I just got mine this turn. I just got mine right now. Oh, you got yours too? Okay, perfect. So I uh, would definitely, for your policy choices, definitely slot in the survey policy card for the double experience for the recon units. And the reason being is that you want to get your scouts promoted as fast as humanly possible. Ideally, you would like to get them double promoted. Because, like, if you get them double promoted, you can pick both the, the Alpine and the, the Ranger promotion. Which means then hills and forests don't slow you down at all. So you're, you basically have, like, a super scout. Mm -hmm. um, and you basically, you don't need discipline to deal with one barbarian camp. You only need that when, like, it starts spawning all sorts of units on you. Um, and you can always switch in later, right? Like, so always, right. always take survey first unless you have found, like, say your warrior found a barbarian camp four tiles from your capital city. Then obviously change the strategy. But generally speaking, go survey first and then slot in discipline when you need it. Um, and then as far as your economic policy card goes... Which one would you take out of God King or Urban Planet? Probably God King to get my religion faster. The Pantheon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's or right. That. Uh, so an argument, like I'm going to do the same thing because I do want it faster, but an argument could be made when you're playing a culture game and you're getting a religion like we are, that you could also go for Urban Planning because you're going to be getting your Holy Site out very quickly anyway which will mean that when you get that holy site out you're going to be generating more faith per turn right which will help you get your pantheon fast anyway so you could make an argument for either or but i still agree like i prefer to go with god king first uh generally speaking in most situations okay and then do you know about um like skipping not skipping text but um like do you know about boosting text like with the Eurekas, like how to read if you look on your, where you have like astro astrology right now, I'm assuming is, is what you're researching? Uh, masonry, actually. Oh yeah, because you want, you need to get that before you get your thing down, right? Right. Okay, so since you just finished your second scout, I would suggest you get a builder for next. Okay. Because you need to, like, if you want to get the boost, like with mining, you could technically override that stone. But it would be much better off for you to improve it with one builder charge, which would give you the boost to masonry anyway, so you'll get there faster. And then you can literally, like, use your builder, improve the quarry, which will boost masonry, which will get you masonry quicker. Then you can next turn remove the improvement that you just built, because you still get the tech boost as soon as you build it, right? And then the following turn, because masonry allows you to harvest stone as well, then the following turn, like once you have astrology built, you can harvest that stone into your holy site and it'll cut your holy site time in like half, basically. Um, or if you alternatively, if you just want to override it, right, then don't worry about getting masonry because you can override the stone and start the holy site as soon as you have astrology now because you only need mining to override the stone. It's just that you can't harvest the stone for production unless you have masonry. So then, if you're worried about getting attacked, 
I would go I would go for a slinger next and then a settler. Otherwise, I would go builder into settler and then slinger. Like for instance, me, I'm I'm finishing my builder in two turns. I'm going to actually get another scout next and then start my second settler. Okay. But again, I'll leave it up to you cuz like there's no right or wrong way to play the game there's just general like tips and strategies and then you have to make the decisions for yourself like when to apply them and and because there's always exceptions to every rule right like there's right oh i totally forgot too i was gonna put on music so sorry it has to be like crappy no name music i'll have it real low though <laughs> so so it, it won't it won't uh won't be too too big of a problem that's fine But I just realized, I was like, oh my god, it's so quiet because I don't have my Civ music on because mm -hmm. of copyright stuff. Yeah. No, you're good. Oh, uh, I got so excited because I saw, I heard the Goody Hut music. Oh, and, and you thought it was you, you and it's me? <laughs> it's like, oh. Why does it do that? I don't need to know that. <laughs> Just burst your bubble, eh? <laughs> yeah, because my person moved at the same time. I was like, oh, aw. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was definitely my fault. It's okay. I'll just cry without my <laughs> secret society. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you what, I won't tell you if I get my Void Singer invite, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you, no. might, you might hear it. Oh, Sorry. no. We actually got the same. We got the same exact thing. My scout got a promotion too. Like no what? shit, I'm I'm not lying. Oh. Also, Sonny, you might have to turn it down on the remote so you don't blast your eardrums out. Are you talking to me or your son? Oh, sorry, my. Oh no, no, that's fine. I just because I I went to go to the bathroom and I got a drink, so I I just I wasn't sure. I I heard you talking when I put the headphones on, so I, I didn't know if you figured out that I wasn't here yet. Oh no, you're good. He like plugged in headphones to the PS4 without turning anything down. So I'm like, you're gonna. <laughs> okay. Well, a slinger found me. Very sad. A barbarian slinger. Yes. Okay, and I hate to burst your bubble again, but I did get my invite. <laughs> yeah. I I didn't notice it at first because it didn't pop up like it normally does, but the the icon did. All right, so that is actually a very good time to talk about it. So if um, I guess you can't see obviously what I'm doing right now, but I'm gonna pull up the Void Singers Society. But it, I'll just explain as I'm going, so you don't need to see my screen necessarily. But uh, so with the Void Singers promotion, like if they're gonna go for them, like I'm gonna take the Void Singers personally; they're my favorite. Um, but anywho, um, allowing you like when you as soon as you take the first promotion, you get to turn your old uh, your monuments into old god obelisks. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea like there's some secret societies where I'll put off the invitation and and I would prefer to get a normal governor first however uh, as the added advantage that I already have my monument now I'm going to take this promotion and my monument's going to give me f plus four faith per turn um, so it's going to help me get my pantheon real quick so I'm definitely going to take it right now the only thing that I would warn you when you're taking a, the void singers promotion if you have like if it's say like a little bit later in the game or whatever and you are building a monument in any of your cities wait until your monument finishes production and then take the the uh, the policy card or not the policy card but take the invitation like accept it because if you accept it while you are building a monument like say you have like literally one turn left on your monument and you take that invitation and you accept it you lose all the production in your monument it just disappears it's gone so always always be careful that you're not building any monuments when you accept the promotion just wait until you finish the monument but then obviously any monuments that you're already done automatically get converted to the their special building after so i'm gonna take that and i jumped from plus one faith to turn up to plus five so not too shabby on my end i must say i'm Might just nice i'm, I'm to to totally ra totally rats <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's okay my husband and i are probably the meanest we'll ever be to each other <laughs> when we're playing this <laughs> chirp each other right hard eh well it's all oh, in it's good really fun crazy. oh no it's all good fun and especially just I don't know. We'll, we will never attack each other directly 
in the game, but things get very inconvenient. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> See, I would think that I would be actually like fighting, like legitimately fighting, fighting with with somebody if I was if I was in a relationship. I would like literally be like passive aggressive to the tilt and like well, just completely the burn them. Works experience in the game and he plays on harder difficulties and everything so he won't like go against me but okay. he'll just completely like kill the city state i was getting benefits from it's just, like <laughs> it's just cool. a small little things to like <laughs> well hey there you go maybe after a couple of these coaching sessions you'll be able to give him for a run for his money what what yeah, diff maybe. what difficulty level does he play on uh i think he oh god i don't remember i know it's not deity but i know it's okay like, but higher than me yeah, then don't worry. After like literally a couple of these, you'll you'll be playing on DD. Like, just trust me. I, I'm I'm that confident in that I can because I like literally in every job I've ever had, I've been in management ever since like I started working, and I literally have trained people all like all my freaking <laughs> professional life. So I'm I'm naturally good at teaching people, and on a one on one setting, I'm the best at it compared to like just watching videos or whatever, because yeah i i will literally bet money in fact i probably am gonna bet money with with uh sleepy the one who, <laughs> who's uh coaching the the other other player i'm probably literally gonna bet money with him that i'll have you on dd before he has their player on dd um all right and so so one thing i thought it was that the new me and that other person were gonna go against each other <laughs> Oh, well, you, well, yeah, like, you, we're going to play a multiplayer game, like, two versus two just for fun or whatever. But just in general, uh, as a matter of principle, like, I think that you'll be playing on DD, like, before that game. Because, <laughs> like I said, the game's probably not going to be for, like, four or six weeks because of all those community. Um, like, now, this Saturday, I'm playing against Normulator. Like, he's getting four people from his community against four people from my community. And then nice. after him, then I have, like now four more creators lined up so like that the two versus two game isn't going to be for like a month or a month and a half so we got plenty of time and like i said I, I i give it like two or three like coaching things like this and i'm pretty comfortable that you'll be able to at least survive on dd if not win outright um so just let you know too though i am switching like remember we talked about god king versus urban planning mm -hmm. and i was taking the faith now that i got that um, now that I got that monument that's giving me plus four faith a turn, I'm switching into urban planning because the production is definitely better than the faith since I have four faith from the monument, right? Or, well, the obelisk. Okay. You know what I mean? Rather than leaving the god king in, I would rather have the plus one production and get my settler done and, and all that stuff finished earlier. Um, and then, oh, for civic trees, where did you go? By the way, we didn't, we didn't talk about that. After Court of Laws, did you go to the north or to the south? Um, I went to craftsmanship just because oh. I haven't met anyone else but you. <laughs> okay, I would always suggest in culture games going for the opposite, going for foreign trade into early empire. And uh, okay. the reason is that you want to get to the uh, colonization is the policy card in early empire that gives you plus 50% production towards your settlers. So basically, you want to try and get to early empire before you start working on your third settler. Like, so your second settler that you build, but I, you know what I mean? Like your third city settler. So ideally, in a perfect world, you want to produce your first settler like you have to without the card, but you want to have that 50% boost for when you start your second settler. Because again, like remember how you, you said you, you struggle with getting your cities out in time like and, and like expanding fast enough? Yeah. That's a big part of it. Like you, you want to get to it as early as possible. So getting to like, don't switch now. Like, don't worry. It, it, like, oh, I already did. Cause it hasn't taken the turn. So. Oh, okay. You just put it in there now. Okay. Perfect. Then that perfect timing. But yeah, other than that, like I would always suggest going for early empire unless you're like the, the only reason I wouldn't suggest going for early empire is when you're first playing on DD. So like if you if you and I weren't here together and like we're really close to each other too. So like I know I can come help you if it come, comes down to that. Ooh, you got a city state. Congratulations. Did you get a first meet? Oh wait, check your governor titles. We might share secret societies because we're on the same team. I didn't I did not get first meet. That's upsetting. And no, I don't have any. No? 
Nope. Okay. Also, that type meeting them didn't give me anything. Okay. Else. Yeah, because you didn't get the the. Uh, so it's not a first meet on them. Nope. Okay, but they have a super easy mission here to trigger the Eureka for bronze working. So, I think, uh, yeah, and you have a barbarian slinger right oh. there. Mine's different. It says train a heavy chariot. Oh, really? Oh, well, there you go. Sucks to be you, then. I got an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so what are you working on now? Like, because I can't see what you're producing. Really? Weird. Um, I am producing a slinger. <laughs> okay, perfect. No, that, I'm that's... I'm assuming I'm going to get attacked. You should be fine with your warrior and one slinger. Just after you finish your slinger, go into it, your settler next. And just okay. between your warrior and your slinger, you should be able to kill them. You can actually hit them with your scouts too, but don't, now that he took the first shot there, you always want to get the first hit on them. But pull your scout back around the lake here and bring your warrior down. And then, pull, okay, yeah, so leave your warrior where you have him right now and pull your scout up to the forest tile, either right beside your warrior or to the southeast, because then the slinger is gonna either come up and like, because of the hard terrain, they have the movement penalties, right? So mm -hmm. they can't move and attack you in the same turn. Either way, they come around that lake, because if they go around the west side, they're gonna get stuck in that marsh, and then you'll be able to hit them like for extra damage because of the terrain, but they also won't be able to attack you the first time. And then if they come around the east side, if you have your scout on the, that second forest tiles there, when they move on to the forest beside your warrior, you can then double attack them with the warrior and then the scout, and it should pretty much kill them instantly or like basically do it, do that. Um, but yeah, that's how I would play it. And then just wait for like the couple turns until your, your slinger is going to get out there and then go find the camp and you might even get your uh, vampire introduction if you want. Uh, okay. And if not, ha at least if even if you don't get um, take the society, you'll at least be able to use a governor aisle, right? Or yeah. a governor promotion. Yeah, at least. All right. Sorry, I was so busy on your thing that I didn't take my turn. <laughs> oh no, you're good. <laughs> All right, so I got my pantheon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're gonna hear my sound again. <laughs> I didn't want you to get get excited and have your bubble burst at this time. All right, so I have it looks like pretty much well not the pick of the litter because I I'm guessing Russia's in the game because um uh, what you call it um Dance of the Aurora is gone the one that gives you faith for for um, for Tundra tiles. It's already taken, so that's usually a good indication that Rush is in the game because they usually take that and they they're usually the first one to a pantheon or pretty close to it, and so uh, I would expect them to be in the game, which is going to make it hard for culture, which is a good thing because then like there'll be lots of obstacles for us to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Other other than that though, I like how they just polite me give the little beep beep. The game is waiting on you. <laughs> oh. um, so. There is lots of different choices that you can do, so I'll talk about them quickly. Do you want me to try and leave you the best choice for the Pantheon? Or can I just take the choice that I want? I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I'll, I'll let you decide, and I'm, I'm, I'll survive either way, so don't worry about it. But I don't know. I guess just take what you want, and I'll work around it. Okay, well... In reality, that's what someone else would do. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll. I know what I'm gonna take, but I'm gonna come down before I take what I'm gonna take. I'm gonna look through your, your lands and find. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I would suggest that you take when you get there. Um, you got silk. So what you want to do when you're deciding on your pantheon is you want to choose one. If you don't get the settler pantheon, that gives you a free settler, and you don't get like, uh, sacred path. Sacred path is still here, by the way, um, as of right now. Like that one that gives you uh, the bonuses of, from jungles to your holy sites. So if okay. if that is there when you get there, I would take that one first because it's the most powerful one for like what you're playing. But other than that, than that, take the one that gives you culture for um, plus one culture for every pasture that you build because you have like those four four tiles 
like right away that you can build them on or actually yeah and then there's two more at the top so there's six tiles that i can see already that will get you plus one culture like because you have the cattle on them and then okay. or if you prefer what you also want to do is because you always want to take the ones that give you culture because those are the strongest like unless you're doing something really weird um so the sacred pantheon one is the or sacred path is the first choice for your holy sites then the cattle one or you could also take goddess of the festivals the one that gives you plus one culture for plantations because you do have dyes and silk on your continent that i can see so that's two oh and, and you have wine yeah so i would actually you'd have to decide between the pasture one and the uh plantation one because you have three different luxuries on your continent that are your uh plantation based so that'll give you a lot of extra culture in the early game and help you out but the the um, pasture one is also a decent choice but i still think the uh the, the sacred path would be the better choice okay if you get if that's still there but chances are that'll probably be gone by the time you get there most likely um and then the choice that i'm gonna take is the earth goddess pantheon so i'm gonna get plus two faith from tiles with breathtaking appeal because i have like a big mountain range near me and tundra is really good for it um for appeal as well so um and then our rock hewn church that uh, unique tile improvement that we have also gives the tiles around it plus one appeal so uh it, it'll be a good source of, of faith but i got here first so na 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i don't have a lot of breathtaking tiles right now yeah, I, I actually, I did look in your appeal before I, I decided to take it for myself. Because if, if you did have a good location, I probably would have just sucked it up and take something else. Because I'm not really too concerned about <laughs> min-maxing at this point. <laughs> I'm just playing along. But um, but meanwhile, to show you like how powerful like chopping that stone is compared to chopping uh, and chopping the forest, compared to just overriding them, right? So right now, my holy site has a four-turn completion. And now I'm going to chop this into it. And it took me down to three turns. And I know that doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it, it shaves off like 25% of the production time off of it, right? And then the longer right. the longer you go to, like the more techs or civics that you get, the, the more production you get out of your chops. So like it, as the further you go in the game, the more valuable your, your chops are and the more more they actually do. Like in the early game, they are still powerful, but you gotta think, I don't I don't have Magnus right now either, right? So mm -hmm. that's an, another thing where I try not to chop very much at all without Magnus if I can avoid it. Um, but yeah, anywho. That was so weird, okay. What was weird, what happened? I have clients fucking messaging me at nine o'clock at night. Sorry, oh. unrelated. Oh no, no worries at all. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So I can attack this dude. Yeah, and that little beeping thing. My husband found a way to like, because you can take your turn back. Like you can unnext if you like forgot to do something basically. Oh really? See, I didn't even so know that. So then you can spam ping the other person. Oh. Wait, yeah. So like, so take your accident. take your turn back. Then then it'll ping you. Then then finish your turn. Then take it back and ping again. Yep. So oh yeah, I can see how that. Yeah, you're right. You and your husband do go at it pretty hard. <laughs> I threw a shoe at him when he did that, but it was. It didn't have the same effect. I still say, say he won that that exchange between the two of you. <laughs> okay. No. Do you know how to take your turn back? Because I think I ended my turn without taking it. Yeah, so like, um, you just click the button again, basically. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's annoying is basically if it's waiting on the other person, anything you do doesn't count. Like, it'll erase it. It'll make it look like it's doing it. So, if, for instance, I click next turn, waiting on you, and I'm like, oh, I'll make my slinger go somewhere else the next turn. Oh, my and, turn, and the move doesn't back, count? It'll it. Yeah, it'll just erase it. It'll put everything you do. Okay. Actually 
Well, that's good to know. Look at you. See, so you're you're teaching me. I'm teaching you. It's working. It goes both ways. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of us found a barbarian camp. I think it was me because I'm on your screen and I don't see it. Yeah, it's you. Ooh, nice. One just spawned, and I can go kill it, and I can get a boost to my slinger. How much do slingers cost on online mode? Uh, 65. Ooh, my god, I can buy one next turn. Nice. Um, the reason why I'm going to be buying my slinger is because I want to try and get the boost towards archery. Because, again, like, all those little Eurekas, they add up over the, the course of the game. So you always want to be... If, it's, if, you, if you're not going too far out of your way... Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I just got a, a wonder. Uh, Lanius that enter adjacent plots received the ability of the Spear of the Fion for plus five combat strength. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I'm going to get all my shit upgraded <laughs> before I go <laughs> kill those barbarians. <laughs> I don't even care if they spawn some units. I'm going to bring my scouts back. I'm going to get the whole freaking family all with that bonus. All right, so meanwhile, you got a promotion. I need to find someone else around here because I wasn't the first to meet them. Well, that's fine. You weren't the first to meet them, so chances are you have somebody to the southeast of you. Or, sorry, southwest of you, rather. Like, most likely that's the, the most likely direction, or to the west. Like, southwest or west is, is where I would be scouting if you want to go meet them. Mm -hmm. uh, but with your warrior and your slinger, I would still go down. Um, do you, do you know about the the um, the technique that you can use to like basically clear a barbarian camp without a fight? No. No? Okay, so what you want to do, and you can actually pull it off right now pretty easily. What you want to do is, you, with your scout, that's down to the south by the mountain. Right? You know which one I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so uh, take him and go up to the barbarian camp because it's somewhere like right close to where your warrior and your slinger are because what happens is when when the uh when a spearman that is in the barbarian camp sees your slinger like when it sees a ranged unit it as long as it's healthy it will leave the barbarian camp to go kill your slinger because it's a weaker ranged unit right so tactically it makes sense for them to go out and engage your slinger rather than sit back and just be hit Right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as they leave the camp to go get your slinger, you can just zip into the camp with your scout and cle clear the camp so it can't spawn any more units. Nice. But yeah, just a sm nice. small little trick there. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go for my shrine first. Because I'm waiting. In two more turns, I get early empire. Did I not finish my settler? What? Oh, never mind. I take that back entirely. <laughs> I thought I finished my settler already. I got distracted. I built my holy site first. I just, I didn't want to do that, but oh well. <laughs> See, no matter how much experience you have in the game, you do still make mistakes. <laughs> and so I I am showing you all my pins, by the way, too, as like you can take a look over it if you want to when when you want to if you want to, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. And I always put the little numbers on top of my districts just so I can remember. Um, so my, my theater square there is going to get four if as long as I build those two wonders that I have planned. I effed up already. That's okay. Why? What did you do? I uh, cleared the holy sites thingy before I was working on my holy site. <laughs> I didn't need that protection. Well, it doesn't I matter. You but, but But you chopped it into your settler though, right? I did. Yeah, so that's good. Don't worry, you got your settler out that much quicker. That, that's good. So, do you have somewhere in mind that you're thinking about settling for your second city? Because yeah, you found the barbarian. Uh, you found the barbarian camp too, by the way. Like, well, clearly you know that. I guess. I guess maybe. Actually, where my warriors at would be. Oh well, no, because the. Well, yeah. 
Because what? Just think out loud. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm not going to judge you. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I was trying to think. Um, because I can't go down to the south like I was thinking. Because there's stupid city states there. But that was like my other choice. I would actually if I get that pantheon because the. I would go to your west, like if you always when you're looking for your settler, like when you're looking for city locations, throw number like four on for your settler lens. I would mm -hmm. go over to settle on one of those two banana tiles that has fresh water to your west. Because you, you can still settle on them, but like they're, they're fresh water and, and you can settle. So you will eat the banana, but... I, I would say that's worth it, but like, cause your settler has better vision, right? So when your settler gets to the first banana, I would, you'll be, should be able to see what's in the fog of war to, to the west of there and then make the choice whether you want to settle on the one banana or the other banana. But that would be the better location. Cause for one, it's closer to your, your capital. And it's also in the direction that the other enemy is like that the other computer is. Cause remember you didn't get a first meet on, on Vilnius, right? So mm -hmm. you want to settle the cities towards your the computers because they're going to settle towards you. So you want to get the best locations you can because then you can settle in this back area like to your east easier once like you have your cities settled near them kind of thing. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but yeah, so that is what I would suggest. And I would even probably move your builder over there ahead of time and see, cause there might be like a chop that you can do. Uh, and then how close are you to getting your Pantheon? Do you know? I'm at nine. You're at nine. Okay. I think it was 13. Cause it's, it's not the same as standard, right? So I think it's, I think it's 13 that you need before you get your Pantheon. So you're only a couple turns away. Okay. Oh, I can make, I can trade with Illness. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to meet my first city-state next turn. Finally got my first settler, Jesus. Sir? What? Are you talking to me? Or... Oh, no. I don't know why I always called the barbarians that... Oh, they, sp they spawned another coming. unit? Oh yeah, see? Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. See, this the spearman came out because he can see your slinger. Like, that's what I was talking about them doing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's fine. Stay there, like, okay, have you moved your slinger? No, you haven't, right? Your slinger or your warrior haven't moved? Right. Okay, hit the warrior with your warrior. Okay, now just pull your slinger. Actually, just fortify your slinger in place. Let him take one hit from, from the spearman. And then next turn, you'll clear the camp so they can't spawn any more units. And your slinger will still survive. Like, your slinger is on a hill in jungle. that they, they cannot one-shot him whatsoever. So you're, you're, you're fine to take a shot. And that way, you'll clear the camp and they won't spawn any more enemies on you. And then that gives your warrior a chance to heal up as well because you could actually probably just sit there and tank it but after you clear the camp with your scout um you can use the scout to help you kill the slinger or the spearman too okay but yeah i was i have another scout at my border which is annoying oh from the, from the north eh yeah well hey it's good experience oh and you got a goodie hut too that was you this time it wasn't me so you, you might get your Void Singer in, intro there, and you might get your Vampire one, too. So you might actually be one up on me. Um, okay, and so for Governor-wise, I would always suggest taking Pingala first. Always, like, there, oh. are, there are other exceptions, but just take my word for it until you get to, like, the point where you're, like, min-maxing and trying, like, alternative strategies out of that are, like, very, very advanced. It is just so much easier to go for Pingala first and then give him the connoisseur promotion to get that culture boost early. Why, what, who would you normally take? Magnus? Um, no. I usually take, I don't know how to say her name, Ling? Ling? Oh, oh Liang? Yeah. Or, if I'm or worried Amani? about tiles that I really want, I'll take Reyna. If okay. I'm like, 
so close to someone. all right so let, let's talk about that for a second <laughs> no 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 like that it's it's so okay so the first one you said was liang right yeah because the build and the, that's the, because of the build charge part. yeah so it definitely and the, zoning. and the zoning commissioner was that oh you get that for promotion oh my god I'm is so sorry. Bad? Yeah, I'm so Why sorry. Why is that bad? <laughs> because her other her other side of the tree is just so so much better than it. Like it's not bad. Okay, like twenty percent production towards districts is okay, but like you're gonna have to rotate her like in order to take advantage of that and like um, to like rip, get a lot of value out of it throughout the game. You're gonna have to micromanage her so hard and like rotate her from like city to city to city as you're building them to like really take advantage of it the reinforced material ones is okay but realistically just don't settle next to a volcano and you don't really need that it's like a not a necessity however her other side of the, of the promotion tree aqu aquaculture can construct a fishery improvement which gives plus one food plus 0 0.5 housing and then also plus one food if adjacent to a sea resource as well as plus one production if liang is in a city that is just way better no. oh go ahead to talk to your son first sorry no oh, no you can't have you have snacks in the kitchen you cannot have mine you're not gonna like those anyways they're like really spicy you have your snacks in the kitchen dude plus you're supposed to be in bed so Sorry. Oh, no he worries. Came, like, like into my face and was like whispering at me. I'm like, dude, <laughs> no. Like I said, you, it's nothing to worry about whatsoever. <laughs> you were saying. Yeah, no worries. So the, the the aquaculture promotion is is way better in my opinion because you can grow your cities that much faster. And then not to mention having plus two housing for every neighborhood and aqueduct district in the city, as well as plus one amenity for that. It's just like the better better choice because you can get more value out of it because you can like grow your your any cities that you found on the coast you can pop her in there and improve those tiles and they'll grow that much quicker because essentially it, it turns like a normal seafood like a normal sea tile that sucks into like a farm for you essentially and like those those imp resources actually improve too i think like the amounts that they yield improve as you get farther in the game but more importantly you do want to get down to parks and recreation so like liang isn't a bad choice like and, and like i'll just i'll explain like my thoughts and then how i would take her afterwards because essentially what i would suggest for most culture games is to take two into pingala for connoisseur so that gives you that you get the 15 percent increase to science and culture for the to like total city yield but then the connoisseur gives you plus one culture per turn for each citizen in the city. So again, like it's it's going to be a huge increase. Like, and a lot of people think when you take Pingala later in the game, when you have higher city population, that it means more. But it's actually, excuse me, it's actually more important in the early game when culture is so scarce compared to later. Like, I would rather have plus five culture in the ancient and classical eras than I would have plus 15 culture in the medieval and renaissance eras because I'll have so much more culture generation by that point that 15 is like a drop in the bucket, whereas five right now literally is like doubling my culture output, right? And the reason why culture output is so important in the early game is because you want to get to political philosophy as quickly as you can to get your better form of government and not to mention go down like and get that scripture policy card and theater squares and all that kind of stuff that we talked about earlier right so again it's just culture isn't important for for tourism in the early game it's important for getting down the civic tree which gives you more things that just help you out in general if that makes sense um, but then, right. like, governor-wise specifically, so that's why I would take the connoisseur. But then, if you get the oracle, I would definitely give a third promotion in him uh, immediately. Because the 100% great people points generated by the city is crazy when you combine that with the oracle. Like, do you normally build the oracle in your games at all, or no? Sometimes. It just depends. Okay, you should basically be trying to build the oracle in every single one of your games. It's even worth it in military games. The only time I wouldn't get it is if you're doing a, a purely religious game. That's the only time it's not a necessity. It's 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 still decent, but it's not like really, really good. But the reason why it's so important is like, because if you look at it, right, the Oracle itself, it uh, not only does it make 
all great people 25% cheaper for you to purchase with your faith. But then every single district in the city provides plus two great person points of that type. So you get three great profit points per turn. You get three great writers per turn, three great scientists per turn, right? Like as, as long as you have a holy site, a theater square and a campus, you go from getting one of each of them to getting six of each of them from the Oracle, right? Or sorry, t sorry, mm -hmm. from one of one of them, from one of them each to three of them each because of the Oracle. But then if you give Pingala that third promotion, he doubles it from three to six. So like between getting that one wonder and that one promotion on him, you literally go from one great profit point to six great profit points per turn. So like, it, okay. it's a huge, huge combination and it's always worth getting. And especially because it's so cheap too. So basically I, and it's so easy to, to plant as well. Cause you just do it on a hill, right? Like that's literally the, the only requirement for it is it has to be on a hill. So it's like super easy to get in your capital in like every single game. Um, but yeah, so that's like another reason why I suggest Pingala first. And so generally I'll only put those first two promotions to him before I then take Magnus for the chopping because then Magnus is going to help chop me out that wonder. But then after that, that's when I go for Liang next because having that plus one builder charge is really nice too. And Reyna, for, you had said for the aqua, land acquisition thing or whatever, it's really not that significant in the early game, surprisingly. The only, if, if you do really want to go down the Reyna path, I like then you go all the way into her like take from if you're going for Reyna go give her the promotion to take her then give her the promotion for forestry management and then give her the promotion for tax collector otherwise it's not worth it um, but again like I wouldn't suggest that like unless you're like there's only very specific strategies where that like like you have to play a, a completely different way in order to make that make sense to open up that way. Like if that makes sense yeah. <laughs> so i would just like highly highly recommend that you just stick with until you like get really good at the game and you're comfortable on dd i would just always recommend opening up two two times pingala into magnus because the way it works out is that you always have magnus then ready for when you get to political philosophy because i would always wait to chop your oracle until you get to political philosophy, because when you get there, then you can go into the autocracy government that gives you a 10% boost to wonder production. And then when you use that with the uh, Corvée policy card, that's another 15%. So you get a total of 25% boost. And then plus the the boost from Ping, or from Ma or Magnus himself for doing the chops, right? So. Right. That's why I suggest going that way, but do what you want. Again, like I'm all, these are only suggestions. It's not like you have to play a certain way. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I appreciate all the suggestions. I'm just a very visual person, so I might forget part of that. No it worries. All made sense. Yeah, I, I need it repeated when it comes. Uh, to yeah, and school. I'm I'm that I'm actually like on my to do list for this week is to make a um a, a video about early governor choices for beginners like so all of it will be visual if you watch that video <laughs> <laughs> but like i said i i keep talking about all these videos that i have i still have a video that's like literally like 80 percent edited right now that was supposed to be out last week and it's still not out yet so take that with a grain of salt i have the best of intentions but whether that video comes out so soon is going to be something else entirely uh, so meanwhile for me, I finally did get my settler out here, so I'm going to go into a shrine next and then uh, reevaluate from there. Okay. Or actually, hold on. Before I do that, what you should do is take a look at the great people points uh, and look for great profits because we, we both want to get religions and somebody has already, like, somebody already built Stonehenge, so there's already a religion gone. Oof. And because we're with six people, that means that there's only going to be five religions in this game. So we have to be one of the next four. And then on top of that, Arabia might be in the game and they get the free last profit. So it has to be one of the next three to guarantee it. But it's not the end of the world. If you it, like the important thing is like it's. It's a great boost if you can get it, but it's not like life or death if you don't get your religion. The faith is the important thing. So, all right, I'm back. Okay. 
Um, but okay, so I took a look at at the great people points. So there's there's one player that's uh, already at thirty of thirty, and they completed mm -hmm. six great profit points this turn. So because their profit output is so high, my guess is that's Russia. It's either Russia or Norway. But like I said, uh, because that um, the dance of the Aurora was already gone, I assume that it's Russia. So they're going to get the next religion. That's fine. But if you look at everybody else, nobody is actually making great profit points other than me right now. So you're, you're still in really good shape. Um, I though it, So what I'm doing, though, is instead of going for the shrine like I was planning on, I'm going into Holy Site Prayers instead. Because it, it do you know what they do or no? I have an idea of what they do. I know they like produce faith and stuff. Yeah, so it takes all the production that you you put into them and it turns it into faith, right? But then when you finish it, so like I have two turns and then I, I complete it. After the two turns, it takes basically like 15% of the amount of production that you put into it and turns it into uh, great people points. So in our case, great profit points. So it's just gonna help me get uh, great profits that much quicker. And that's so, cool. yeah, that's why like I'm choosing the holy site prayers rather than the um, rather than the shrine because the shrine would have taken me four turns to build, and then after it's built, it only gives me one great profit point per turn. So, like literally, I can do two of these holy site prayers in the same amount of time, and I'll like quadruple the amount of great people that I'll get. So it's just when you're worried about not getting your religion, automatically switch into holy site prayers until you get your religion, essentially. Okay. Good to know. Uh, okay, anyways, you're waiting on me here. So, and then, yeah, so I got early Empire done now. So I have that colonization card that I can slot in. Uh, so now I'm just going to go straight for uh, early or er, for political philosophy. Uh, and, yeah. But, oh my god, I didn't, I'm. You're so right. <laughs> you no, know, remember what happened to you? Yeah, remember when you're like, oh, uh, when you change your policy, this and that, blah blah blah, right? Yeah. I still have out. I still have the God King and not urban planning. Like I tried to switch it to like freaking whenever that was way back when. It also won't notify you when you can change your policies when you're a multiplayer. Like normally, like. When single player, it'll pop up like, oh, you unlocked this. You can change it now. It won't let you. It'll just let you miss opportunities, <laughs> which I did oh, not know. Okay, did not now, realize until now halfway that, through the game. Now that you mentioned that, yeah, it was about to do the same thing. Like, I thought that it was going to, but yeah, I could actually switch it this turn, which I thought I could have. Um, so I, at least I can put in urban planning now. Jeez. Now imagine uh, me learning the game for the first time, but in multiplayer. And so I oh had God. the exact thing too until like I had already unlocked a new government and I just didn't. <laughs> that was my first time playing. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> what a great experience to, to set you up in the game, right? No, I don't want the vampires. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. The vampires are actually very good choices if you want to hear me out for a second you don't have to choose them but they're the second best choice in the game like even if you're not yeah even if you're not playing even if you're not playing a domination game like i actually did a, a space game with ethiopia using the vampires um so yeah even if you're if you even if you're not playing a domination game it's not the vampires you care about it's the vampire castles because they are just crazy powerful like do you know what the castles do or no no not at all okay so basically let's let's use this just as an example here it'll be an easy example just one second so look on your side right by where you're about to go settle see that pin i just put in there of the vampire castle like right yeah. by right by your settler to oh wait hold on Oh, I'm an idiot, sorry. You should expect that by now. Okay, now do you see it? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, what the? I think I just like literally changed it to self all over again. Okay, hold on. I am a special kind of special sometimes. Okay, to team. Okay, now do you see that? Yeah, on, on the banana? Okay, okay. 
All right. All right. So what a vampire castle does, okay, is it's a, a tile improvement that your builder lays down or, or not your builder lays down, sorry, that your vampire lays down. And what it does is it gobbles up literally all the yields from the six tiles surrounding it. So say, and you can build them in neutral territory too. You don't have to build them in inside your own own wall or empire like borders. So like if you built a vampire castle right there where I have it placed, you mm -hmm. would literally get two, four, six, eight, ten, ten production, two, four, six, nine, eleven, thirteen food, and two gold so your capital city would get whatever i just said like 13 production or or 10 production 13 food and two gold it would automatically give your capital city that production and those yields and you oh, get shoot. and you get to build four of them throughout the game so wow. like you don't get to you don't get to unlock them until the medieval age though so if you are going to go with the vampires don't Unless you want to play with your vampire early, which, I mean, it can help you defend in DD. You don't have to be aggressive with it, right? But mm -hmm. uh, if if you don't want to, like, get the vampire, you don't have to worry about giving them their promotion until you have to have two promotions saved up until the medieval era. Because that's the first time that you can um, uh, you can actually build a vampire castle. But they are super, super powerful. Like, I I had in my in my capital city in that a game where I was doing this space run with them. I I had like over 200 production in my capital city. <laughs> it was just stupid like uh and that I had that that like really early in the game too cuz when you get the ability unlocks in the medieval era, you can build two of them. So uh you could just imagine if you plan ahead and like build them in really nice spots with really nice adjacencies that you can get like just absurd amounts of production and food and, and everything in your in your capital city. So that's why for a culture game it would be it would be an interesting pick because your capital city would have so much growth and so much production that you could literally build wonders like in a fraction of the time where like where a wonder would normally take you like twenty or thirty turns or something, you'd be able to build them in like five or ten. Like I literally I remember in that science game like I, I could have built like the Taj Mahal in like eight turns and like just stupid absurd amounts of things like that so like I said you do what you want that's just an alternate thing but it, like, you they are the second most powerful society in the game uh, so I got Muscat who just wants me to send a trade route so that's nice and easy well dang well you don't have to go for the vampires. Like, do what you want. I'm just saying that <laughs> it, 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 it is an option that you can go for, but don't feel obligated to go for it. Because, like, I still think Void Singers are the best, but, like, the vampires are very good, too. Not to mention it gives you that vampire that you can, like, use to defend yourself against the DDAI very, fairly easily, too, right? And congrats mm -hmm. on the uh, getting the camp there and working it and your stat. Yeah, I would just, like, literally use your scout and your slinger to kill the spearman between the two of them. You should be fine where you are. Okay. Now I'm trying to think of what to make next. For your city? Yeah. Your holy site. It shouldn't be... I don't there. have that yet. I have two more turns. Oh, okay. So in the meantime, then I would probably put two turns into a settler, because after your holy site, I'd suggest you get another settler. Okay. Oof. That was you, I think, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I got a. You found a delicate wonder. arch. Congratulations. That's a lot of faith. It is. Not to mention, okay. I think desert folklore was available too, so that might be something that you consider if you want, if it is still there when you get your Pantheon. Shouldn't you get your Pantheon pretty soon? If you haven't mm -hmm. already? Almost. I'm at 11 now. <laughs> okay. And don't forget, yeah, I guess we are playing pretty slow here. Uh, don't forget, too, about that goodie hut beside your scout that found the Delicate Arch, eh? Mm-hmm. 
All right, and I got another governor title, so I am going to promote Pingala, like I said, to connoisseur. I did that too. I'll decide a secret society in a minute. I haven't, haven't found the ones I want yet, and I'm still thinking about them. Yeah, hey, there's no rush. Especially because, like I said, the vampires are only important. Like, if you're not playing domination with them, they're only important later in the game. Um... And I mean, that's the great thing about Civilization 2, is that it's not like life or death, right? Like, freaking, you got, you, you can think about some things, we're not, on, we don't have a t game timer on for a reason. There All right. you go. Yeah, it is, it is definitely Russia in the game, like 100% it's Russia. There are up to eight great people, or great profit points now. So it's, it's no definitely, way. definitely Russia. But don't worry, the other ones, like I said, none of the other ones are, have even gotten a single great profit point, so you're fine. Um. So, oh, Desert Fork Blower is still there, and Sacred Path is still here. All right, and so so Sacred Path and Desert Folklore are there. All the ones I want are there. All of the good choices. Okay, so before you make your decision, I'd close out of that and move your scout if you can. Or did no? You already moved him, right? Yeah, I got the Giddy Hut. Yeah. That's like the one thing that that would be like the one exception to the rule where I would have like poked up to the desert to see it, to see how big that desert is. But you know what? Don't even worry about it. Like you're you're so close, like you have so much jungle around you right now that like by far I would suggest sacred path. And okay. um Yeah, because like so now though what you need to do is go tech wise, you need to get to bronze working immediately if you're not there already. Okay. Because you you need bronze working in order to chop rainforest, or like r override it essentially. Okay. Um, and then for your city location, what do you think? Which banana do you think is the best? I was gonna go with the second banana so I could get to that mountain easier. And it's also better too because you'll get to that when that volcano blows up, if it does blow up, you'll have those, those will all be better tiles and better yields and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that, like you said, I would go with your suggestion there um, and settle there. And then for your holy site though, I would settle it right here. As long as, as long as you are taking, um, as long as you are taking the sacred path yeah, I did. You did? Okay. Um, so then now to... I, oh, I can't delete your, your pin. Sorry. Uh, so now I would probably change the capital's holy site to... Um, you have a little bit of money. Yeah. I have 145. Okay. I would buy to this tile right here and place it right there. Uh, you can't see it yet. Just one second. I would buy to that tile one yeah and then place it where to your the capital's east and then either make your uh, that wonder that i was talking about earlier like the mobile body temple just make it on one of those two one of those two tiles whichever you prefer okay actually hold on. i take that back same thing but not whichever you prefer make it on this tile specifically right here because I'll, and I'll explain you why um, just quickly. So the reason why I would suggest that tile rather than the forest that's beside the lake is because if you choose that one, you can get uh, some, a theater square from another city in here and here. So you can get two different theater squares that take advantage of, of your Mohobody temple. Not to mention also, um, you can build entertainment complexes. So you could build like an entertainment complex in there too. That Because now entertainment complexes give your theater squares plus two uh, adjacency bonus. So they're actually worthwhile to build. Okay. But yeah, so I would suggest that. And then like for your next city, like your third city, I'd suggest coming up here because you get three air score if you settle um, 
within two tiles of a wonder. Plus, they give you um, they give you plus they give you plus two adjacency bonuses for natural wonders. So I'd put your holy site here because it'll get one from the mountain and two from that. So it'll become a plus three automatically. Okay. Sweet. And then this, like by switching, like from where you had the one originally by the mountain. By switching it to your new one, it's going to become one, two, three, four. It'll become a plus four off right off the hop. And then I would actually wait for that the, the pin that I just deleted, the theater square. I'd wait for that one because that is a jungle. And when you build that, technically you'll actually lose an adjacency on that holy site because you're overriding the jungle. But yeah. Um, so did you use all your builder charges? No, right? Because you went over and scouted. Right. No, I haven't used them all. Yeah. So what I would suggest doing is building a farm on either the maze or the rice paddy to the north there. So that way you'll get the boost for irrigation. And then I'd probably send him over to uh, chop that tile. So but just because it's so quick, I would send. I would do the maze first. And then just go straight and I would chop that forest into your, your holy site. Or actually, you know what? It's going to take too long for him to get there. Fuck that. Just override the tile. Like, just buy, buy out to that tile and then just place your holy site when you get it, get astrology. And don't worry about the production. Like, it, it would literally take your, your builder, like, six turns to get over there. Which, it's just more important to get your thing finished. Okay. Oh, did you get your Hermetic Order invite when you saw that? The Delicate Arch? I did. I did. Okay, so... Okay, perfect. No, I, I'm just... So you have, you have governor titles to work with. That's all. So it's a good yeah. thing. I finally got Void Singers, so... Nice. So you did to go to, with Void Singers then? Yeah. Okay, cool. And so in that case, after your Holy Site... After you... Sorry, after you get your Religion, I'd get that... Uh, old God Obelisk as soon as you can, but um, like I said, I would be running, like, once you finish... Ooh, Ugh. that's you, not me. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to get... I keep forgetting things. I forgot to get by my slinger, like, three turns ago. <laughs> oh, well. Um... What's that? Oh, I clicked to start getting into the wrong position. Ah, okay. Oh, so sick. <laughs> I'm not used to playing on online speed at all. So I'm used That's to it taking 60, 60 great profit points to get your great profit. So like that completely came out of the blue for me. I got my I got my religion. I but I wasn't expecting it for like another like five or six turns. So I got my guy. I'm happy. Nice. All right. Why is there another? What now? Sorry. Oh, this freaking um. Hey, can you, do you have enough, did you buy those tiles? Yeah, you did, right? Could you yeah. uh, trade me one gold? No. <laughs> Just one bulk gold. That's all I request. Oh, did I, did I oh, there we go, accept deal. Sorry, that was me. Is my fat fingers were bumbling. I got Shrek hands, just take my word for it. <laughs> they're they're good for some things, the others it's just really not. That is so sweet. This holy site is a plus six holy site. <laughs> but I was like literally one gold away from being able to afford to buy the tile. 
and we discovered oh no you what sorry i was say also my holy site's gonna be a plus five not a plus four it is says. it yeah well what did i screw up hold on now I'm, now i'm curious oh i forgot i forgot because there's a two force beside it so it's a plus five you're right or, well the computer's right because I was only counting the jungles, but it has two forests as well, so it gets plus four from the jungle and plus two from the forests until you override them. Whoa, you got two scouts up near you, near the north. I, I, I do, yeah. I, I knew there was another one that came up there, but I didn't know there was a second one. Yeah, this is quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's a good opportunity to level up your units early. Uh, so you already like you're pretty close to getting your early empire then and switching into craftsmanship or how are you yeah four okay. turns away four turns away from early empire or from craftsmanship from early empire okay because once you get to that you can slot in the agoge policy card and it gives you plus 50 percent production towards units and then i suggest getting a couple slingers after that but you definitely want it to get a settler first but you're in good shape, don't worry. The barbarians are okay, and I'm not that far away from you either. Like, And plus, remember, they, they can't do anything to your capital city. They can only do stuff to your second ones. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll get my pins out of your hair. I know I, I left a bunch of pins all over your territory. <laughs> <laughs> there, I cleaned it all up. Uh, all right, well, now... Oh, I like the other ones. Oh, which ones? The holy or the uh, the wonder and yeah, the cedar square. Yeah, yeah, because I will forget. Well, you can pin them for yourself, you know. I that is that is true. I suppose. I guess I. But yeah, don't worry. I'll put it up here. I have more p experience pinning, anyways. It comes naturally to me because that's like part of part of the game that I love the most. Um, but anywho, uh, I'm a little bit bitter and disappointed because Iron. There's an, a slot of iron right where I want to build my oracle, so now I won't get my plus four oh. theater square. However, that's okay, because now I can just shift it over. To right here. And now I can actually, it'll work out better, because then I can get a theater square. Um from my capital and a theater square from the other city here. So I'm gonna put the government plaza. Oh, I guess you can't see my pins. I keep... And then, so this will be theater square. I wish you could just set it by, by default to be by team. So I don't have to do it every single time I freaking click on, a, on one of them. But oh well. Right, that would, that would be helpful. But yeah, so that will be a nice little boost there. And we got four turns on that, and I can change policy. So now I'm going to switch to my colonization card. So my, uh, so my settler will come out that much faster. And meanwhile, since we're not building it right away anyways, uh, I'll be getting that. It's weird, though, that we haven't seen anybody yet. Like, neither of us. Oh, what are we? We did meet people? What? When did we meet people? I guess right now. We met Teddy. And and Shaka. Ooh, that is a nasty combination. I have not met Shaka. Uh, I don't have the gold to send to oh, them. Oh, yeah, not you. Uh, so you definitely... Oh, I met him. Yeah, well, and he's close to me. Okay. Oh, he said no, sir. Why? What did I do to you? Did they both say no? Uh, Zulu said yes. Teddy said no, which is weird. See, we probably met him like last uh, turn or something. Like I probably met him and just didn't notice because like he didn't pop up like it, I'm used to because I'm not used to multiplayer, right? Right. So like normally they in single player they pop up and they're like, oh, nice to meet you, blah, 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 blah. But that didn't happen at all, so I think we missed sending him the delegation on the first turn. Uh, so, whatever, he can go fuck himself. If he wants me to kill him, I'll kill him. Uh, so, uh, what you can do, though, is you can you can pay for their open borders. Um, yeah, so you can pay for their open borders ahead of time. 
and that will increase the relationship even if okay. you you pay like even if you pay Ooh. for theirs it will increase your relationship level and make them um cuz like do you know about relationship levels or no yeah I but do. like going to the uh, like the relationship tab and and checking yeah and seeing why they're mad or why they like us and okay all that yeah, and that it was right. Zulu took my delegation as well, so uh, it was just we must have seen Teddy first, and then Zulu thereafter. Um, but oh well, shit happens. Teddy's pretty easy to get on your team, like because I have a city state between the two of us, so he's technically not that close to me. But he's actually a very powerful enemy because he has plus five combat strength when he's fighting on uh, a continent that's not his own. Or is it his own? I forget. I always get them confused. Because now that I've been playing multiplayer, there's a, a mod that we use. I think it's his own. If I remember right. Yeah, I think he gets plus five on his own. But in multiplayer, they changed it. So it's plus five on his own and plus five not on his own. It's just like a straight up plus five. Um, but yeah, anywho. Um, I'm not worried about it, don't worry. I'm, and I'm glad that he's beside us. I don't know where Zulu is, so do, have you seen Zulu anywhere? No, I don't see him. Like, I think we just bumped into a unit somewhere. Or it's from the city-states, too. I think. Well, if we oh, would... Oh, I met him because he has sent um, envoys to Vilnius. I don't okay. know that. Yeah, Vilnius. I think you said it right, didn't you? I think so. I think so. I don't know. We'll give you the... Hey, I'm the last person that should be giving anybody shit about pronunciating something wrong or pronouncing. Pro See, I just said pronunciating. Jesus. I'm kidding. It's Muscat, not villainous. It's yours. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, either way, all good. Um, I'm just glad that they're by me because, yeah, like, just don't worry about it. I, I am more than capable of offending for myself here. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose my religion. And I am going to pick the wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful religion of mythology. Mm -hmm. And I always pick the cow for it. Oh my god! I got like all the picks are here. I oh my god. I think like I swear to god I just got a little bit of a chubby. I haven't been able to pick <laughs> choral music in like forever because i play on dd difficulty and on dd in single player like literally it's gone every time unless you get the very first religion i haven't been able to play this or pick choral music in like literally it almost a year now because it was like a long time ago they patched it out i think it was the june patch of, of 2019 where they changed it but mm -hmm. oh, okay so oh no it's never on mine either Okay. Yeah, so I would I would highly recommend that you take choral music if you ever have it available. It's the best religion choice, hands down. No, no, no close second. Okay, so choral music mm -hmm. is the best because what it does is shrines and temples provide culture equal to their faith. Uh, one second, I got a cough. Sorry. All right. So yeah. So shrines and temples provide culture equal to their faith output. So it basically turns your holy site into a mini theater square. Nice. And yeah, it's just, it's crazy powerful. So, oh my God, I'm, like I said, I'm so happy. <laughs> like, freaking, <laughs> oh my, I'm like a little kid at Christmas right now. But yeah, so choral music is the best one to choose, especially for this, but in, in like literally almost every game type. Uh, the second best choice is Jesuit education, being able to purchase your campus and theater square district buildings with faith followed by uh, either work ethic or reliquaries. Um, and Feed the World is good too, but I think that's already gone. I don't see it here. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely picking choral music. And then um, the second one, like I like, th this one's not essential. Like I like to pick this personally because I don't really care about my religion other than the culture that it's gonna get me. Like I'm not spreading my religion to win the game or anything like that. So I like to choose, and I'm going to choose, religious colonization. And what it does is that cities start with this religion in place if founded by a player who has this as their majority religion. So literally, 
every city I settle is going to start with my religion and I don't have to spread it. That's literally yeah. all the card does. But for me personally, it's worth it to pick it. So I'm going to. Um, other than that, though, for your earlier one, I would say Teeth is a good one. So plus three gold for each city following this religion. Um, okay. Did do you... Hmm? How, how did you say that? Oh, tithe? Did I say teeth? Yeah, see, that's what I mean. Pronunciation's <laughs> my kryptonite, man. So it's tithe? So it's, it's, yeah, it's just tithe. Tithe? Yeah, it's what tithe. you do in a church when you, like... They, yeah, I know, they, 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 you, you, pass around, but... you pass around the frickin'... The, they kind pass of. around the, the thing and, and you put your money in, in, like, the envelopes or whatever? I don't know if my church that I was forced to go to was different, but no, the tithe was on top of that. It was, like something you put in an envelope that was usually like a larger amount but like you had to do it oh so yeah so, like, then then, then you're pretty much. I, I was in a cult i was in a cult when i was younger my parents were in a like no oh my shit God. my parents were in, in like a cult it was called the worldwide church of god and that's why i hate religion and i don't even want to talk about it but uh yeah, anyway I, but they had I to literally <laughs> they had to literally give 10 percent of their income back to the church and yes. so that's what that is yeah yeah no i yeah so it's we called don't, religion and I don't get along. Yeah. <laughs> but like I'm I'm actually a spiritual person but I'm not religious by any means. Um Yes. <laughs> but so it's it's tithe is what it that's how you pronounce it? Okay. See cuz yeah. I I like to pronounce things right. I'm just not good I at mean, it. <laughs> that's how my church pronounced it. I well, was no, also that, eight at the time. So it, It's okay. I I, I that, that makes sense anyway. So tithe. Okay. Um so that would be a good choice for the plus 3 gold per city following the religion. Other than that, uh, World Church, the plus one culture for every four followers of this religion would also be an acceptable thing. Stewardship, uh, the plus one science or gold would also be good. Because remember, in culture games, um, in culture games, science is also very important because you want to get to basically computers and then it's game over. Oh. Uh, I'll explain that. Yeah, like, I, it's a well, long, it's a long ways. Science. Yeah, it's a long ways away, so I, like we'll deal with it when the time comes. But I'm just taking a look through if there's any other um, decent ones to pick. Um, I mean, if you're worried, if you're worried about like us being on DD, you could take Defender of the Faith for the plus five combat strength in in your own cities with, under your religion. But I, I wouldn't worry about it. I would go either cross cut. So I would take either the tithe or teeth or however you say it, tithe. <laughs> um, or the cross cultural dialogue for the plus one science for every four followers of your religion. Or the world church, the plus one culture for every four fo followers. Okay. In fact, I think I actually might go for stewardship for a change. I'll leave. I'll leave religious colonization for you if you want to take it. If it's if it's there when I get my apostle, I will take it if you don't get to it first. But I'll give you a chance. I'll take stewardship because I don't normally do it. So I, I'll just experiment. Um, okay. There you go. I got my religion. And it is Russia in the game. Like for sure. Because East, Eastern Orthodoxy is the one that already went and they took feed the world and what which is expected and very good choices from them okay Ooh, and i'm one turn away from a golden age Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. uh oh how am i going I got six turns. I'm not going to get to that barbarian camp in time. All right, so I definitely need to meet somebody. Which should be okay. I got two scouts out. Who did I... Oh, my God, we made... I, I'm at a city-state with my scout there. And look, at they're both friendly. See? See how our dip diplomacy worked? So now uh, go declare friendships. They're not more friendly to me. Oh, really? Nope. Um, Roosevelt is upset with me, but Shaka is happy with me. Like ha no happy, who's who's green? Like is Shaka, Shaka green? Okay, well declare the friendship. Um, but yeah, like Teddy's happy with me because I paid, um, I paid, and I bought those open borders. But then I also it's because I've triggered his uh, his agenda, like because I'm on his continent. I don't think you're on his continent. 
I'm not. Yeah, I'm you're not. not. Oh, yeah. So I got to avoid that because I am on his continent. And so what that means is that he has a, a thingamabobber where, whatchamacallit, um, that as long as you're on the same continent as him and you are not starting a war, that like you positively trigger it. Like that's literally all you have to do is not get in a fight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm already declared friends with him, so that is fine. But yeah, so like that's what this is what I mean. Why we're DD's not that hard. You just have to like use your diplomacy in the early game, and like you can avoid wars like 99.9% .9 of the time. And as soon as you have a them declared friend, like you should basically be able to keep them as a declared friend for the rest of the game. Ooh, and we got Vatican City, who wants a religious conversion and. Uh, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> Recruit a great admiral. Okay, sure. <laughs> I have no coastal cities or harbors, but okay. Vilnius is actually a great, um, a great little city state too. Do you oh take... no, that was for the Vatican. But Vatican wants me to do a great admiral. Oh okay. Um, do so. Do you want the? Do you want to go after Vatican or Vilnius? Because we got to split them up. Uh, they both Probably villainous because they're next to me. Okay. And, and that would suck if they're <laughs> mad at me and I'm not their suzerain. Oh, no, they wouldn't be because we're on the same team. They'd, they'd never be mad at you. Like, city-states will never... I think that's how that works. Yeah, it, it, it is because um, they they only go to war with you if the the whoever is their suzerain goes to war with you. So I'm never going to go to war with you, so they'll never be oh. mad at you. So, like, if you and your husband were playing, for instance... And he was suzerain of Vilnius. Like, if that you went to war with the two of you, they would be mad at you. But no, they'll, they're just as far as even if I were to take suzerain of them, they'll never ever do anything to you. It's it's only if you were to go to war with somebody else that took over their suzerainship. Yeah, well, that's more what I meant. Like, if someone else managed to get them. Yeah, but yeah, I'll let you you take them, and I'll go after Vatican City. But I would still like su suggest you putting points into Vatican City to get the extra faith from you at least put three up to three so that you get the extra faith from shrines and from your temples and consulates. But not a huge priority. Are you still there? Yeah, oh, I'm here. Sorry, oh, okay. I thought you said like K. Oh, do you s I just heard you say K, so I got that. I just assumed you were talking to yourself. Oh yeah, I know I was. <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't. I was. I was trying not to point that out, but like, you know, <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I, yeah, I was just trying to be polite. That was the Canadian in me. I, I'm trying to figure out who to use my next governor title on. Okay. All right. Well, so. How You've taken you, so you are a member of the Void Singers now. Like you accepted that, yeah. right? And then, yeah. you, and then you promoted Pingala, mm -hmm. the connoisseur. Yes. Okay, so then I would go for either Magnus next, or I would go for Liang next. Whoever you'd prefer out of those two, or Amani is an option if you want it to take suzerainship real quick of somebody. But I, I would say Magnus or Liang would would be the best choices. I would personally take Magnus and then Liang, but I mean, do what you want. Probably Pick your Magnus. poison. It's just he's he's very nice to have, so you can chop out wonders and districts and stuff like that real fast. Yeah. Um, and then so oh one thing too as remember in the civic tree as you're heading towards theology in order to get to that scripture card and to get to that wonder that we we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Keep in mind that in your capital city that you want to like when you finish your holy site and you after you get your religion you want to get your shrine up as quickly as you can because in order to build that wonder that you have pinned there you need to have a temple built in that holy site as well. So like you want to have you want to have the shrine already done before you get to theology so that as soon as you get to theology you can start on the temple and like having magnus for that is great too to chop that out actually did you take magnus yeah okay never mind i was gonna say now that i thought more about it because you're, that's gonna be your first wonder rather than the oracle like i'm going after um that 
Amani might have been a good choice because you got a lot of tiles that you can prove to. You got lots of iron and lots of horses. Look at you. Oh, wait, you can't even see your horses, can you? Nope. Or iron. <laughs> oh, or your iron? Yeah, okay. So One you, more turn. You got two iron immediately to the south of your capital, like both of those hills, like where that barbarian scout is, and then the one beside him are iron. And then you have horses uh, above you, like in a diamond, like if, you're, if your capital's the base of the diamond and your mine is like the writer point, like right in between the marsh and your, your diamond above it, that's a horse. And then you got another horse two tiles away from that and a third horse two tiles away from that. So you got plenty of strategics to trade in the early game. Uh, and that's the other okay. thing too, because we have we have computers in this. Like I already traded my luxury away, but I'd highly suggest you trading like strategics that you get as you don't need them because we're playing peaceful here. So we won't need our strategics except for like upgrading units here and there. So it's always better to get gold so you can do things with it. If that makes sense. Right, yeah. I don't think I've ever played a game of civilization this slow and relaxing. It's it's a nice change of pace. That's not that's not like a, a slight on you by any means. That's just like literally. This is like so oh, and I got a goodie hut, so I got my freaking golden age. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you look real bad, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> the getting a golden age in the classical era when you have a faith economy is just like crazy powerful. Like I'm gonna be able to get settlers and builders out with my faith. So like I'm gonna springboard like very very quickly. What's you? How many? Um, what are you looking at for air score? I I'm, need I'm not making fun of you. More. You only need three more. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully I should get it. Uh, we got three turns. I think you're shit out of luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's three turns until the air ends. Oh shit! Because I'm just, I'm just trying to think. Um, I don't really know what gives. You, them. yeah, like, I, like, believe me, I, I know when I'm, I'm looking for through what you have available from where you are, because like basically your only options would be hitting that barb camp up to the north. That would give you two, but you won't be able to kill it in time, so it doesn't count for anything. If you settled on any of those desert tiles, you would get plus one, and then if you settled within two tiles of that, you would get plus three, but that doesn't count because you don't have a settler anywhere remotely close that could pull that off in time. Um, if you hadn't already used all your builder, they are volcanoes now smoking, so when that goes, you could get one. But essentially, your only hope is if your scouts find um, goody huts or you meet new players, because you get you get one every time you meet a new player and you get one every time you land on a goody hut. So I would basically, instead of sending your warrior straight up to that barbarian camp in the desert, I would send him to the east, like by, by Lake Tur Turkana or whatever that's called. And I would send mm -hmm. your scout through that mountain range and basically just pray and hope that you you find somebody. Um, but yeah, because there's three turns left. I don't think you're going to get it, but you're very close, though. So And, and you, you got to think, you're very close and you're on Deity, right? So like, or Deity. There's another one I don't pronounce correctly very often. <laughs> but so you're doing very well. And this isn't too bad, is it? Right, not so far. Not yet. Not yet. You have such little faith in yourself. Uh, I have faith in you. Don't worry, Firex. I have enough faith. So it is Firex, right? Uh, yes. Okay. I thought I double. I thought so, but I wanted to double check. But yeah, I got enough faith in you for the both of us, so it's okay. What the fuck? Then... Oh, never mind. I what? I was like, what the fuck? It won't let me do just what you you were saying. How when you click and turn, it won't let anything you do afterwards actually work. Mm. Yeah, I, I forgot about it. And so like when I was waiting for you, I was like, oh, um, I was like, oh, I can switch my governors. I might as well do that now. And I started to do it, but it, it wouldn't let me do it. And I'm like, what the? F and I started like clicking it more than once, and then I started getting upset. And then I'm like, oh yeah. Thank God you were here, otherwise I'd be freaking raging out hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Oh, dang it. I got excited because I saw a little, like, podium symbol, but it's just shock of giving me a delegation. Ah. I was like, yay, I met someone. I did it. <laughs> They're sending me delegations, too. That's, that's so weird for me to get used to. Uh, new continent discovered. You discovered a new continent. Unfortunately, that's not error score. I was gonna say, unfortunately, it doesn't help me. Yeah, I think you are. It's not not your fault. You're close, but there's only so much you can do, right? A lot of it's spawn dependent too. But that's why, like, see what I mean? How it's how important it is to get those scouts out early. Like, I know you did. Don't get me wrong. But like, just imagine if you didn't get those scouts early and didn't find the gold, like the the delicate arch or like as many goody cuts as you did, right? You wouldn't even be mm -hmm. close to sniffing a golden age right now. Ooh, we found a cad. And they want us to recruit a great scientist. build my holy site up like at the top hey where i'm so, i'm looking where where are you talking about i'm pretty let me where's the stupid you told me to build oh wait that's just self uh-huh you want me to build it right here but if i do it right here it'll give me a plus five yes but your volcano is already smoking and mm -hmm. uh for okay for one the the tiles that are all around the volcano are like really valuable tiles because they're huge like especially if the volcano con continues to go off like repeatedly it's going to work out great for you because they'll become really really powerful tiles so those tiles are actually more valuable than a plus five holy site not to mention there's also the added thing that if you build your holy site there, anytime that volcano does go off, there's a good chance that your district is going to get damaged. And especially the further you go throughout the game, as you improve that holy site and you have like shrines and temples and all that kind of crap, right? Usually when a volcano goes off, it will damage not only your holy site, but all of the buildings inside of it. So you'll literally have to spend like a turn repairing one building and a turn repairing another building. And it, like, and it, 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 as it happens more and more often, it's just very, very inconvenient and actually significantly like is this a huge waste of production so like the plus three or whatever it was right i think plus four yeah the, the plus four um is the better choice it will go down to a plus three when that volcano erupts because it's going to melt that um it's going to melt the rainforest that's t like directly to the east of it but yeah I, I would definitely recommend settling that one or um Another option would be the the tile beside the the maze, but I still think that jung or the getting rid of that jungle tile is your better bet. Okay. But yeah, otherwise, like, feel free, go ahead and plant it there, like by by the volcano, and take the five adjacency. Th that's just the reason why I, I wasn't suggesting that is because of the volcano damage and the tiles itself are going to become really really good. Right. But again. It's all up to you, boss. <laughs> oh, the dedication. All right. So, do you know? Don't take. Don't choose it. Do you know which one you're gonna choose? No, not yet. All right. So you 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 tell me your choice or your thoughts, and then I'll tell you my thoughts after. But don't don't pick it yet, though. Hear me out before you pick your poison. Um. Hey, actually, hold on one second here, okay? Just ignore me I, and uh, take the headset off your ears or, or like, mute me or something because I'm going to clap 
in like three, two, one, because I'm gonna put a cut in here because we're at like the end of the air and the start of a new one. So okay. just ignore me for two seconds, okay? Okay. And watch your ears in three, two, and one. All right, so we've come to the end of the ancient era. I hope you have enjoyed yourself getting a more in-depth peek at how I would suggest to play the game. I know it has been quite long, but I hope you found it interesting. If you haven't already, please do me a favor and leave a like on the video. Uh, I will put a link in the top right hand corner for those of you watching on a computer or on the YouTube app on your mobile phone right now where you can check out a tutorial I was talking about with her earlier about the district planning. So uh, like I said, top right corner for that. Otherwise, we're going to cut the video here. So <laughs> I've definitely rambled enough, at least for this video. So I'm going to shut up and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. All right. So just give me one more second. I'm not clapping again. So don't worry about your ears. But now I have to do another introduction. Hey, everybody. It's Gamer Gramps here. Today, we are continuing our one on one coaching session with a uh, player who normally plays on King difficulty. I made her bump up to Dee Dee and we are doing her best, our best to teach her how to play culture games efficiently. And yeah, that's basically what this is. So if it sounds like, like something you might want to watch, then definitely stick around. And quickly, I will put a link in the top right hand corner right now. If you're on a computer or a, your YouTube app on the mobile phone, you can jump to what you missed in the first session if you want to see what happened in the ancient era. Otherwise, we are just about to head into the classical age here and pick our dedications so you haven't missed a whole lot but if you do want to catch up it's there in the top right hand corner all right you're good to go again <laughs> okay cool i play on prince though well i gave you credit because <laughs> prince is below king is it not i don't i don't even remember yeah, it, is. it is okay well there you go <laughs> okay you get some ex oh, extra credit some street cred yeah so for your dedication, yeah, what, what do you think? I was thinking probably either Monumentality or the Exodus one. The oh. only one makes me hesitate is I don't actually have religion yet and I may not get one. So. Okay, so those are bad choice. <laughs> the first, no. No, sorry, the one is really good. Sorry, the Exodus is really good. That's the best choice for you to pick. And the second choice would be Free Inquiry is better than Monumentality. It's a lot easier when, when you're specifically for the classical age, because you're so early in the game, it's so easy to get so many Eurekas. Like if you take a look at your tech tree right now, because uh -huh. you, you said you're visual, right? So if you right. pop if you pop it open, okay, you already killed a unit with your slinger, did you or did you not? I haven't, but I think you did that barbarian, or did you get the kill with your scout? I killed it with the slinger. Okay, so you do have that? Okay. So anyways, though, right, you just discovered iron this turn, so you can still get the boost for the wheel, build a mine on a resource, so that's one. You can build an iron mine for iron working, that's two. You can build a pasture for horseback riding, that's three. You already sent a trade route, so you got that one. I've already gotten those two. Oh, you built a pasture already, too? No, oh, sorry, no, I meant, like, the iron mine and... How did you get that oh, one? If you just discovered iron this, or you just got bronze working this turn, I thought. Yeah. So why does it say boosted? Or do mine count for you? To, no, mine can't count for you. No. Oh, you know what? You got it. You must have gotten it through a goodie hut. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I was like, I have some boosted that I definitely have not done. Okay, Wait. but yeah, there's just I won't go over all of them, but like, I mean, there's so many easy ones like building city walls, building a water mill owning three archers, okay. building three mines, that it's just, it's so much more error score than your monumentality. Uh, but the Exodus of the Evangelist is a good one. So like, I would say to take Exodus. However, what you do want to check for first is go into your great people. Well, I'll do it for you, so don't worry. Oh yeah, never mind. don't, oh wait, yeah. Sorry, I saw the cannot recruit and I'm like, oh wait, never mind. they're already gone. But that's just for me, because I already have a great profit. I can't recruit another one. Um, yeah, it's still just me and you. Yeah, so there you go. You're you're at three, and nobody else is even getting any. So yeah, you're a hundred percent. You're good to go. Getting uh, taking an exodus, and it's by far your best choice, because not only like I remember I left that um, religious colonization card for you to pick, like the belief. So mm -hmm. uh, you're you'll like every city you found after you get that will start with your religion. Um, and then not to mention like Vilnius will be easily converted because they're right by your capital city and like you're you'll just you're gonna settle more cities 
and you get two air score every or sorry yeah you get two air score every time you settle a city with exodus so i would highly recommend that one but otherwise always take free inquiry for your second for your it's for your classical era dedication just because it's way more easier to earn if you don't go for a religion it's way more er, uh, easier to earn all those early eurekas than to build districts and stuff because you might like you're probably only going to build like two or three four or five maybe at the most districts during this whole age so in the long run it's always better to go for free inquiry in my opinion anyway Okay. Ooh, I just saw a barbarian horsey up near you in the desert. No fun. Yeah, I saw that.